The first thing I disagree with is obviously the ETF that he purchases, which is Vanguard Total World Stock Index Fund. Now, this is absolutely one of the worst ETFs of all time. I would argue, uh, you know, buying this is as good as buying TTCF. Now, you know, TTCF is down about 90%. So, you know, you're definitely going to do a little bit better with VT. But I will say this. Why are you going to go out of your way to uh, invest in one of the more worst ETFs out there? So So by Clown Kingdom of Mussies own admission, the S&P 500 and SCHD is superior because they went up more. The stock price, the ETF price appreciated more. But now that VT has appreciated more than SCHD, well, SCHD is still better because, uh, 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 uh. by his own logic, VT is now the superior ETF. And the thing with, with VT, the the argument is, oh, look, I need to be diversified, diversified, diversified. It's like, what are you talking about? Are you are you drinking the Kool-Aid? Like, what's going on here? Obviously, you got the United States, okay? United States still gonna have decent growth moving on forward. And you have to understand a lot of the US companies are very international at this stage of the game, and they're cap capturing a decent amount of gro growth internationally pretty sure 60% oh no 40% of uh, the companies inside of the S&P 500 are international okay in terms of the revenue so it's kind of foolish to think that when you invest in a regular VOO or VTI that you're not getting international exposure you absolutely are because what's what's the point of having a Japanese exposure Jap uh, <laughs> The Japanese stock market is definitely something you want to avoid, as well as the UK and Canada. And I'm Canadian and I'm saying this, and I primarily invest in Canadian companies, but like these are like smaller companies I tend to invest for. The main Canadian companies, again, these are market weighted indexes. They're usually big banks and oil and gas and uh, gold mining companies and railways. These are very, very, very mature um, industries as a whole. So you're not really gonna get much returns in terms of share price. You might get some decent dividends, some defense, but you're really not going to get any appreciation, especially if you're trying to hold these for the next 30 to 40 years. Uh, France, another one you don't want to invest in, or Switzerland, or Australia, or Germany. Here's the thing. There are good, high-quality companies inside of these countries. The thing is, you're not really going to capture that said return going into a broader index for these said countries. Because again, the larger uh, market cap of companies in these uh, nations are usually going to be very mature companies for germany i think that's more so the chemical companies i think um you know for switzerland i would say probably the banks similar situation with france uh canada especially the 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 big banks the canadian banks are definitely making up a decent uh weighting uh as well as utilities and oil and gas and you know all that stuff railways so the next point that kingdom of mussy makes that the oh he's such a great investor <laughs> he's, he's so arrogant and stupid it blows my mind how stupid and incompetent this man is. His next point is that the United States is going to have more growth. How does he know that? Past performance. And the rest of the world, well, you know, they, they have very low growth companies and they're not going to have massive returns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let me tell you how this actually works. It's actually very simple when you think about it. Your expected return is the current price that you pay for a stock. You could have a massively high growth stock or an ETF, a country ETF, that has done amazingly well. But if the price appreciation has outstripped the underlying earnings growth, you can still have a bad return. I give you the ARK ETF as an example. A lot of high revenue growth companies, massively underperformed. So let me tell you this. If Japan, with its super low growth, was trading, the entire stock market was trading for a 1 PE, would you consider buying it? What if it was trading for a dollar? Would you consider buying it? Would you probably have higher expected returns if you paid a very low price for Japan, for the Japanese stock market, as opposed to paying a higher price for the US stock market? And where do you think there's the most euphoria and possibly possibly potential overvaluation in the market that's gone up a lot or the market that hasn't done so well recently. I wonder where there could potentially be higher expected future returns. Hmm. He's a massive hater for dividend investing, by the way. Um, he thinks dividends are tax inefficient. It's very misled. 
the tax rates, the qualified for qualified dividends, it is very favorable for dividend investors. And it really goes along with your income. And, uh, you know, TLDR, if you make less than 100,000 bucks, you and your spouse together, it's not really that big a deal. And if it's a loan, if you're single, you know, below 42 uh, in terms of dividends, it's not really that bad. Um, so that, that's the thing you have to go on with. Like, let's say you're trying to retire on dividends yields about 3%. It's, it's going to take a while. The actual dividend or tax rate's not that bad. It only really, this is the capture that you're going into. 41 to 450, your t total tax is about going to be 15%. So that captures most people as a whole. And again, there's some loopholes with this that you can play around with. Um, so you guys can figure that out for yourselves. But it's not that bad. And it's actually a lot more uh, misguided uh, for the most part. So, so, to, so to just suggest, oh, oh, yeah, um, dividend inefficient. You can't do dividend investing. Oh man, this guy is gonna do so well on YouTube because he is a very stupid person. You know he blocked me, by the way, like a little coward bussy after I crushed him in the debate. VT is like day trading. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about dividends. So this guy really doesn't understand. I, I look him, look me in the eyes. He does not understand the fundamentals of what a dividend is. It is very simple. It is cash being distributed to the shareholders. When the cash is paid out, the share price drops by the amount of the dividend. It is as simple as that. And what this clown doesn't also understand, because he's a Canadian weirdo, is that we also have state income taxes. That's right. So on top of paying just 15%, for no return because the share price drops by the amount of the dividend, you're also probably paying state tax. But, but, but there's one state that doesn't have tax, so that just proves your point. You, Kingdom, are a very stupid person. He's so stupid. Oh my god. The air, he's such an arrogant prick. I don't know how you can associate. Some of the people that I see associate with him, you should be embarrassed by associating with a guy, number one, that doesn't understand how dividends work. Number two, he made this serious claim that VT is day trading. And this guy who is just a regular guy just understands the markets to such a great degree that he can write off every other country in the world except the United States because of his amazing analysis and totally not because he's buying stuff that went up a lot. Like I said, really think about it. Why is he buying SCHD? And what do you think he's going to do if SCHD underperforms? He'll probably sell it. <laughs> what a noob. The average retail investor makes about maybe 4%, while the broader market has averaged about 6% the past 20 years. Not the worst, but eh, it's very mediocre, honestly. You could definitely get those returns a bit higher with a better index here and there, like SCHD. Now, I will say this. I think the reason why the average retail investor just tends to do bad is simply they don't have anyone beside them telling them hey maybe you know you shouldn't be selling or whatever because again most people are going to be very emotional with their investments so he says it right there retail investors except for him of course because he buys stuff that goes up a lot and he just understands the global economy to such a great extent that just buy u.s stocks bro retail investors underperform the s p 500 you heard it from the horse's mouth. Why do retail investors underperform? They buy stuff that goes up a lot. They don't have the patience to buy and hold something, even if it temporarily underperforms because they want the quick gains. But this guy who doesn't understand dividend, he doesn't. He's, he is not a smart guy. He just discounts pretty logical assessments of how to invest globally because U.S. stocks went up a lot. And he's basically just a trend investor buying SCHD. I wonder why it's so popular on YouTube. And I wonder what enticed him to buy it. This guy is now going to be a stock picker. He's going to tell you how to beat the index. <laughs> but you know what? He's going to do great. on You know, Kingdom, I wish you the best. You're going to do absolutely fantastic. You are so stupid, so incompetent, and such a joke of an investor that you are going to crush it on YouTube. And I, I wish you the best of luck. And I can't wait to see how you massively underperform the, the stock market over the next 10 years. 
and how that won't affect you in the slightest because you'll probably be making good money off YouTube ad revenue for shilling a bunch of garbage. So congratulations, buddy. And last thing, why don't you unblock me, you little bussy? Huh? What are you so scared of? Oh my, I'm not mature enough for you. <laughs> you, you blocked me because you're an incompetent fraud. That's why you blocked me and you can't argue my points. I use logic and reason and patience. You use performance chasing clownery and classic retail logic. God bless you, sir. Have a wonderful day, everybody.